Hello and thank you for watching. My name is Rachel Barnett with Gentle Frog. I'm here to create videos for you to help you understand QuickBooks slightly better than you currently do. If you have any comments, questions, or suggestions, please put them in the chat box. Thank you. Hi, this is Rachel Barnett from Gentle Frog. In today's video, I want to show you how to record your payroll from ADP into QuickBooks Online. So quick clarification, this is obviously not ADP, this is Google Sheets. And we're not going to use the integration, we're going to do it manually. If you don't use ADP for your payroll, this video might still be helpful for you because I want to walk through the process of entering your payroll data into QuickBooks Online. So let's go ahead and get started. I believe that I've got the Google Sheet all squared away. If there's any typos or whatever, we'll figure it out as we go. What you'll generally have when you get a payroll report it is a payroll detail summary. You'll get something that says, here's your employee and here's how much their gross wages were. So they have this many hours times this rate equals this total. Here are the taxes taken out of that person's paycheck. Here's the total that they get for direct deposit. And then over to the right, here are the employer taxes. So this is a pretty typical uh, report you're gonna get. The layout might look different depending on your payroll company, but the report is the same. The second tab is the payroll liability report. This is just a fancy way of summarizing the money that's gonna come out of your bank account. With your payroll company, there'll typically be two draws, one deduction from your bank account for the direct deposit, the total of all the money getting pulled out, and a second deduction for the taxes. So the employer tax and the employee tax. The third summary, um, this is just a, um, a different view of the same thing. And so it says, okay, you have payroll liabilities, which are the money withheld from people's paychecks. Some of the money withheld from people's paychecks, you as the business owner or business manager, you need to turn that in. That could be if there was a health insurance deduction or a garnishment or a 401k or any of that stuff. Then there's the other stuff, the taxes that ADP is going to remit on your behalf. In this example, ADP, but again, each of your payroll companies will do something similar. And so this report just tells you like, hey, of all the money that got deducted from people's paychecks, of all the money that we set aside and said, hey, the company owes this money, here's the allocation of it. Here's the type of money that is owed, and here's who is going to turn that money in. ADP, the client. Okay, let's hop into QuickBooks. As you know from working with QuickBooks, there are so many ways to do everything. I'm going to show you one way to do this. This is not the only way. There is not a one right way. I just want you to see a way to do this. You can then take this, and if this works for you, totally use it. If you need to modify it to meet your needs, Fantastic, modify it. I'm gonna make a journal entry. So I'm gonna to go to plus new in the upper left hand corner. On the right hand side, I'll select journal entry. I'm gonna make my journal entry date the date that my payroll ends. And so my pay period ends on 228. Um, I'm like, oh, the check date, theoretically our check date if our payroll is 228, we'll say that it's like 228. Doesn't matter, it's all the land of make believe. So let's make this 228. So 02, 28, 22. So now we need a pile of debits and credits. I like to start on this report, the payroll detail report, because I like to start with my wages. For me, it makes the most sense to tell it in the like story form. And so somebody got paid, taxes were taken out of their paycheck, they got the direct deposit. So the amount of money that people got paid are these two numbers here. So let's go ahead and highlight them just so you can see what I'm talking about. So the total amount of money that people got paid for their gross wages, it's 6520. All right, so let's make that line number one. So wages, and then the debit is gonna be 6520. And I'll just make myself a note here so that I remember what it is um, for all team members. So now I, I have an expense of $6,500 for my wages. Before my team members get that, they lose some money to payroll taxes. 
I'm going to go ahead and just grab my total here. Nope, oh, wrong side. Grab my total here. Uh, let's give it a different color. So that is these two. So what I do is I just call it payroll liabilities. What you can do if you want is break out the kind of payroll liabilities. For me, I don't care. I don't, um, if I wanted to know how much money somebody paid in Social Security or Medicare or federal withholding, I would just go back to my payroll company and look at the summary report there. I'm never going to think to look for it in QuickBooks. So you're going to see me doing something slightly different than what you might do. I see both. Um, I see people who say, gosh, I want to see all the breakdown in QuickBooks and people who say like I do, like, look, I'm going to account for my liabilities and if I want to see the breakdown, I'll look for it elsewhere. So this is, uh, let's say, employee payroll tax withheld. It's not necessary to put the description. I put the description so that if anybody looks at this later, they have a really good understanding of what I was doing. Where do these numbers come from? If you're an experienced bookkeeper, you probably don't need like the, the hand holding the extra information. If you're a business owner and if I, I've helped you with your records, I'm going to try to leave you a little bit of breadcrumbs so that if you ever wanted to figure out or follow the path of what I did so you could do it for yourself, then you'll be able to say, oh yeah, like here's that report and here's this information. and Yeah, I get what's going on here. All right, so what we have so far is we have the gross wages and we have the payroll liabilities, the tax withheld from people's paycheck. The next thing we should record is the direct deposit. And so the direct deposit is going to be these numbers. Oh, let me use the other button. Okay, let's give that a color. Um, let's give it green. It's people's money. Um, so this is the total of the direct deposit. It's the total of Jeremiah's money and Holly's money. And so we're just going to enter this into QuickBooks. If people were getting individual paychecks, then it wouldn't come out of the checking account all at once and we would enter them as individual line items. But in this case, they're direct deposit in the land of make-believe. Instead, we're going to enter it as one deduction out of the checking account. Okay, so what we know or what you should know is that your debits and credits always need to match on a journal entry. It's not the sort of thing that you're going to have to worry about forgetting because if they don't match, you can't save your journal entry. So right now our debits and credits match. So that's perfect. That means that our sample payroll is correct. And then we got our numbers incorrect and I didn't have any typos, which I am prone to do. <laughs> so let's go ahead and move forward. What we've entered so far, if we go to the second tab, is we've entered this. We entered a bunch of extra information so that we could say, okay, like here's how it came to be. There was some gross wages and then there was some taxes withheld, but like ultimately these people got direct deposit. The next thing we need to do is enter a record for the taxes. So the taxes are gonna be a blend of employer money and employee money. If we go to the third tab, we can kind of see that in action. ER is just a fancy way of saying employer. So this is our employer money. And then over here, this is our employee money. So in make believe land, um, we've got these totals. So let's go ahead and enter it in a QuickBooks. I'm just gonna put it on the same journal entry. You can put it on the same journal entry. You can put it on a separate journal entry. I think when I sync the software, um, the payroll software with QuickBooks, it'll make a separate journal entry. You can make one journal entry or two, whatever you prefer. When I sync payroll software to QuickBooks, it'll typically make two journal entries, but I want this to be easy for you to see, so I'm gonna make one journal entry. So the first thing I'm gonna do is go to the employer tax. So my employer tax is this number, this 1200, which is the sum of the three things that I've highlighted. For simplicity, I'm just gonna copy this. So my employer tax is gonna be payroll taxes. It is an expense. So when I click this drop down, it says sub account of taxes. I know that my expenses go into the debit column. And so I'm gonna say employer payroll tax. And then the second line is the employee tax. The employee tax is all of these numbers that I've highlighted, 
plus the $10. So my grand total is $911.82. I'm just going to copy the $911.82. And then earlier in the time long, long ago, I, um, I entered my, why don't they match? Hold on. <laughs> um, I was going to say that my payroll liabilities equals my payroll liabilities up here and they don't, which means that I have a small math issue. Um, let's just go back. So my payroll liabilities, got this on a second screen, so I'm just going to compare. So I should have, um, oh, this first number should be 429. Well, you know what? It doesn't matter. You get the big idea. I'm just going to grab, um, I'm going to grab the number I need, not from here, from my make believe summary, but rather I'm going to grab it from here. So my employee, gosh, my employee taxes, um, my total money withheld from my employee, the total money withheld from my employees, this is 897. And so I'm just going to throw that here and I'm going to say employee taxes, um, payroll tax withheld. And I will come over here to the other tab and I'm just going to paste that number. No, how did I manage to not copy the right number? Gosh, I'm not good at this today. Let's do this. Let's go copy. Let's go here. We'll go paste special values only. And I'm just going to delete all of those. Um, so, so just like right land a make believe I'd rather show you the information than start over on this video and possibly not get it recorded. So bear with us as we have technical difficulties, um, when making stuff up. <laughs> so, um, so, okay. Big picture. Here's what you've got. You have a debit to wages, which basically says increase my wages expense. You have a credit to liabilities that says increase the money that I owe that I'm going to pay later. A credit to checking, which says decrease the balance of my checking account. Now down here on the second half of the journal entry, I've got the expense to payroll tax. It's my employer tax. And then I have payroll liabilities again. And payroll liabilities is showing up in the debit column. So basically on line two, I increased my liability bucket or my liability account. I just said, oh, I'm scooping up this 897 and I'm going to turn it in later. And then come down here to line six and I'm like, oh, it's later now. Now I'm going to turn it in. So the last thing that happened is that I'm going to enter the amount of money that gets deducted from my, ch my checking account. So um, payroll taxes... Uh, taxes remitted um, via payroll company. Okay, so what happens is the payroll company takes out money for the direct deposit and they take out money for the payroll tax, um, the employer tax, the employee tax. The other thing that you're going to see is the payroll company will charge you a fee. That might happen once a payroll cycle. It might happen once a month. I usually don't make a journal entry for it because when it comes through in the, the downloaded banking, I can just allocate it to fee. The only other thing that I do that I haven't yet done is that I will download my payroll report and I'll attach it in the lower left-hand corner. I do that so that if I need to go back and reference something, I can. I like having the ability to go log into my payroll portal and get it, but if anybody looked at my journal entry and said, gosh, I don't understand, I really have questions, or I'm trying to follow it, or I'm trying to learn it, or whatever the case is, I just throw it down here as an attachment. So this wasn't a perfectly smooth uh, video explaining how it works. I got a little chattier than I usually get, but I really want you to see kind of the big picture. If, if you have to manually add your payroll, or if your payroll is sinking and you just don't understand, like, what are all the things on your screen telling you? That's the point of my video. My video is here to help you understand it slightly better than you do. So if this has helped you, that's been great. If you'd like me to create a video based on your payroll like report, feel free to toss it in Adobe, redact anything personal. I will do a better job of making a silly Excel sheet, and then I'll make a video for you based on that. 
If you need to reach us for any reason, we can be found at gentlefrog.com. Thank you so much, and we'll chat soon.